Today we're going to talk about regular powder versus mag powder, mainly concentrating on magnetic powder and what are the advantages and what can you use it for. I've got in front of me a sample of each. Here we have the black oxide powder, our standard 101L. On the left we have magnetic powder, which is our M114. The difference in these two powders is really how you apply it. This is your standard fiberglass brush. This is used to apply your standard black powder. And if you've had any training in fingerprint development with powder, you probably have used something similar to this. And you're probably used to developing prints with oxide powder. How you would do this if the brush was not already loaded, you would actually dip into this powder, get a little bit onto the brush, and then you're going to use a brushing or twirling motion to develop a fingerprint. So let's demo that. So as you can see, we do start to see some ridge development and some prints developed here. Now, we can do the same thing with magnetic powder. The difference is, instead of using a brush, we're going to use a magnetic wand. This has a small magnet in the head of it that will allow us to pick up the powder. And one of the biggest advantages is, instead of the tips of the brush, which can actually damage the surface and, and sometimes erase a print, uh, we're not going to touch the print at all. The only thing that's going to actually touch the print with this mag wand is the magnetic powder. So let me show you. We're going to make a big, what we call plume. This is where the magnetic powder attaches to the magnet. We have all this hanging below it. Then we're going to use this like a very soft tip brush. Instead of pressing this into the print, we're actually just going to slowly move this plume over the print. So let's demo. You can already see that we get much faster ridge detail, much faster buildup. And let's look at one of the other advantages of bag powder. As you can see, when I pull the magnet back, the powder is released. If I have too much powder on a standard oxide, then I might use something like a Marabou feather brush. And I would use that to clean up the print and try to remove some of the excess powder. But with the mag powder, I don't need an additional instrument. I can use the magnetic wand now, and I can go back and I can pick up any of the excess powder that may have been left behind. And I can continue to do that, picking up any excess that might be interfering on this. So, with the mag powder, instead of having a brush and a marabou feather brush, I can use one instrument to do my application and also my cleanup. Next, let's take a look at where mag powder outperforms oxide powder and where you should be thinking about using it. So now let's explore where magnetic powder might be a better choice and outperform a standard oxide powder as far as the brush versus the magnetic wand. Usually, if we look at smooth surfaces, especially plastic, glass, these are items where both magnetic and oxide can be used. But magnetic powder can be used better, mainly because of the brush not touching the surface. So let's demo on a particular item. This is a pretty common plastic jar, very similar to what you might encounter at a crime scene. Uh, some people may say that you should cyanacrylate this, but we can also process this with powder. So let's start with our black powder and our brush. As we go over this, we can possibly start to see some development. But one of the problems is, is that as we brush it, the more we brush on, we're having a hard time building up any ridge detail. We actually can destroy the print. We can actually move some of the print away from the surface. And therefore, this becomes a tedious task and kind of a longer term task. Let's try the same thing using mag powder. Now we're going to use the magnetic wand, that nice plume, and a gentle brush over top of the surface. Now, 
look at the difference between the ridge detail and how that pops out immediately with the mag powder versus when we were working with the brush. Again, keeping the plume heavy, working around the bottle. And we can see that developing with mag powder is much faster and better detail immediately. Again, if we feel that we may have applied a little too much, we can go around, pick up any extra crystals or extra metal, and then start to look at the ridge detail on this bottle. Another piece of evidence is very common that, again, we recommend magnetic powder for is plastic bags. These are used for, drug evidence, for drugs, drug evidence, um, many, many different uses and many reasons we might run into plastic bags at a crime scene. So again, processing with the brush, I can go over this, I can start to see maybe a little ridge detail. You can see some of the development that's coming here, but again, a longer, tedious process. I may move some of the detail of the print, I may destroy it with the brush. So let's try mag and let's see how the difference comes out for magnetic print. Going over the same area. Do my cleanup. Now, look at the difference in the ridge detail. How much stronger, easier, easier to see, and it was a much easier process than trying to build with the with the, the regular brush and the regular powder. Now we've talked about oxide versus magnetic powder, the ease of use of magnetic powder, how it's easy to apply, works well on smooth surfaces like plastic, easier to clean up because I can use one tool. So where would I not want to use magnetic powder? You know, we talked about smooth plastic surfaces, so how about things like weapons who have smooth surfaces or automobiles where there's a lot of painted smooth surfaces. Why wouldn't I not just want to use magnetic powder rather than a brush to process those types of things? Well, one of the disadvantages is, is that magnetic powder doesn't work well in things that are magnetic, like steel. So here's an example. Here's a, a cover, has fingerprints on it. Let's try to process this with magnetic powder. So as you can see, it's like painting. What happens is all that iron holds that magnetic properties, and then this, which is very magnetic, holds all the powder. And all you do is you just get smear marks. You get, it looks like, almost like fur because little pieces of iron just get stuck to the surface of this material. So for a ferrous or magnetic metal, you cannot use mag powder. So things like weapons, which are made of steel, and cars, which are made of steel, this is not the way that you want to process. So we've gone through oxide powder, we've gone through magnetic powder, showing you some surfaces that it works really well for, like a plastic jar, a glass, a bottle, plastic bags. Uh, the only thing that we haven't shown you is uh, footwear. It also works really well on highly waxed surfaces where our shoes have relieved a deposit and they can be developed. And then it can also work on textured surfaces such as the styrofoam cup. And it can work on surfaces such as a dashboard or a textured countertop. The key to the textured surfaces though is not the application of the powder, where the magnetic definitely has an advantage, but in the lifting. So stay tuned in future webinars and Lunch and Learns. We will talk about lifting techniques and we'll specifically talk about magnetic powder and using that to get off of items that usually are difficult, such as a car dashboard or maybe a steering wheel. Thank you for watching in today and I hope you learned something about magnetic power and oxide powder.